kind of a little bit of trial and error. I haven't gone striper fishing, like actively targeting just stripers in a very long time. Um, just because once summer rolls around, I get that sheep's head fever and you know, it kind of takes up most of my summer months. But um, I think I'm gonna start shallow first and work my way to deeper spots. Um, I'm gonna try everything. I don't know what part of the water column they're gonna be feeding on. With the warmer water, I think they're gonna be higher up, but you never know. Um, one of the big things I'll, I'll try, if, if higher up in the water column doesn't seem to be where they are or feeding, we'll try bouncing the bottom and jig. So uh, I'll try and let you know as the video goes which technique or method seems to be working. All right, before I lose sunlight, I'm gonna be fishing a combo of things. I've got quarter ounce eye jig with a uh, four inch paddle tail slam shady. I got a top water uh, plug tied up, Mackinac shad. So one of those three options is what we're gonna start out with. So stay tuned, we'll see how it goes. All right, so we're gonna start, we're gonna be fishing probably under this bridge. Um, might also be hitting some cut throughs that run, you know, pretty close to this. Um, tide should be shifting very shortly. Water's really warm though, it's, you know, 79 degrees on a high tide which is super super warm um i'm hoping that these fish will still be you know feeding because i know how it could get when it gets like boiling hot here you know but uh the only bad thing with an outgoing tide it's only going to get warmer but we'll uh see how it works so stay tuned oh there's a fish what the heck blue no, weaky. That's pretty cool. I haven't caught a weaky here in a while. All right, well that's cool. I haven't caught a weak fishing. I don't know, very long time, but I haven't actually been actively really targeting these guys. Uh, he might might have been there, but I'm not trying to. You know, I mean, if I'm gonna keep fish i'll keep something else but because you know oh there we go there's a fish not sure what kind of felt like a flounder but that's kind of strange because i was casting it and retrieving it no not a flounder another another wiki oh well, that's cool a little smaller so we're going in the wrong direction but man they have some cool cool looking uh colors man i i know it's kind of hard to see in the dark but a little spike off he goes oh there we go there's something might be another weak fish honestly it's got the weak fish feel to it Yep. All right, man. Tonight just might be the week night of weak fish for us. All right, let's get this guy back in. There he goes. Oh, son. Man, got the thump on the first drop. I didn't even get to do an intro or anything. Not a big one by any means, but start, right? Gotta start somewhere. Right. Trying to get you back in the water, man. All right, well, that's a start. I'll tell you what, man, I don't know if it gets much better than this. One of the beauties of fishing like terrible weather days is you usually will be fishing by yourself. I mean, tonight we saw one boat, which is fairly uncommon to see that little number of boats, but I think the lightning and thunderstorms probably kept people off. Probably smarter people than me. But 
It is nice when the fish are cooperating. Try and get it in that little eddy. Because if you throw it anywhere where there's current, it's just getting swept, especially a quarter ounce jig. But the problem with fishing a little bit heavier here is you're probably dropping beneath that feeding zone because of the sheer weight of the jig. There we go, there we go. Let's go. Ooh. Nothing huge that time, but he, look at that, man. I don't know. Ah. He swallowed that. Got it back, though. Cool little fish. Ah, right. try right here. There we go. Let's go. Oh man. Is there a better sound than that? Oh man. These are like the moments where you're like, why do I stop fishing for these in the summer? Because there's definitely a, a summer fishery for these guys. But I, th I think I get so sheep's head crazy that I kind of forget about them. It's not a bad one. Get the net for you. There we go. Yeah, that's a chunky bass. Ooh, let me make sure I'm not gonna hit. All right, man. Doesn't get much better than that. Cool little bass. There we go, there we go. Oh. What a weird fighting striper this one is. It's like he, he wanted to run, but... Ah, uh, there he goes. So weird. You could always tell, like, when they have a little bit more size, you could feel the weight after you hook them. But when they have that little bit of a pause where they're kind of like, I guess, still figuring out their hook. And then you wait for that first initial deep run. Uh, there we go. Man, another one that just absolutely in inhaled it. Oh my Lord. Luckily, it's just inside his jaw, but he just absolutely crushed it. Yeah, so it seems like they're feeding a lot higher in the water column right now than they normally do, but the water temps, you know, 80s, which makes sense. You know, usually, oh, oh, there we go. Usually this, when the water's like this warm, they're feeding a little bit higher up because that's where most of the bait is.
little guy. We're gonna flip you, buddy. I try with the bigger ones to net them because especially the ones that have a little bit of weight. Shoot. Um, I don't want to put stress on them. These smaller guys that aren't huge, um, they can handle being flipped. Especially if I'm getting them back in the water pretty quickly. Uh, well, we finally ran through our first lure. Man, I'll tell you what, it's turned out to be a pretty decent night. Once I figured out the speed at which I need to work the lure, it definitely became a lot easier. I think initially I was working my swim bait a little too fast and not really taking into account the amount of current that we're fishing right now because the lure is moving with the current to look more natural. Oh, something just short striked me. Um, so you gotta kind of take a little bit off that way. I'm staying in that speed that they're feeding at. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, son. He did not like seeing the boat. There he is. It's crazy, the bait that just run around him. Every time it comes to the surface, you just see spearing run around. Ah. There we go. Easy, buddy, easy. I'm gonna let you go. All right, let's get this back out there. Ooh, terrible cast. Let me try that again. One thing I do like doing is trying to get it a decent distance past the light line. That way when I have it working right where the light meets the dark, it's more natural, like a bait fish getting ambushed. If you cast it right where the light is, or the edge of the light, you're really kind of missing out on that area that these fish are just thriving on. And you could be literally casting right on top of them, and at that point, they're not really interested because they're kind of more looking for the ones getting washed by them, not the ones washed behind them.